Hi, this is Roman, and today I'm going to share an instructional routine called Connecting Representations that can be used for Unit 7, Day 3, Part 1 on the lesson on inscribed angles. So this routine is from Fostering Math Practices, and it promotes discussion in the classroom. I would suggest it for synchronous learning. So here in my first example here, I took my directions to be connect each diagram to its correct equation and use the sentence stems below to make connections. So here, students would be using these sentence stems um, in your class. So they might say, I saw in diagram one, the intercepted arc was 160 and that the inscribed angle is 80. So I connected that to equation two. And the other stem is blank matches blank because so maybe they might say diagram two matches equation three because I saw that inscribed angle was 50 degrees in that one. And that promotes discussion in the class. Um, and if you decide to use it without any gathering platform, that's a way to have that discourse. In this example, there's three diagrams and there's three equations. So each diagram has a corresponding equation for students to match it to. And this really allows students to investigate the structure of the inscribed angle compared to its in, um, intercepted arc and the corresponding equation. So following that activity as a launch um, that I would generally suggest to do in the first portion of the lesson for about 10 minutes um, for this launch and this writing activity included. So here you're really asking students what do they pay attention to when identifying the relationship between that inscribed angle and its intercepted arc. Um, what was helpful to pay attention to, and you're getting a good idea of their metacognitive thought process. So that's one way to go about this activity. Another method or another variation here is not to give the three diagrams three equations, to only have two equations. So for this example, one of these diagrams does not have a corresponding equation. Students are going to be asked to create an equation for the representation that does not have one. And uh, we'll notice that in this one I have inscribed angles and I even included a central angle. So they're really making sense of the structure of these two vocabulary terms, central angle and inscribed angle. And again, use the talk stems, I'm sorry, use the sentence stems to uh, promote discussion in the course. Um, and then students would reflect based on that. Um, as a reference, here we have uh, the New Visions breakdown of how to use this routine. You will notice that based on New Visions breakdown uh, with the time allotments that they suggest to use this as a full period activity. Um, they have close to 50 minutes allotted to each portion of this. And I modified that to just be a launch. Um, one, one important thing that I'd love to highlight here is that it is aligned to Math Practice 7, um, which is to learn to have mathematical discussions with each other. Uh, excuse me, that's math, math Practice 3. And Math Practice 7 is intended to support students in making sense of mathematical ideas through mathematical structure. So that is great in terms of uh, its alignment of math practices. So one more thing that I'm going to show is how you could possibly use Desmos as a tool. So I'm clicking desmos.com. I'm going to click browse activities. I'm logged in here. So I'm, I'm going to my left hand side where it says custom. And I'm going to click a new activity. And uh, I'm going to call this connecting representations. So as it loads, what I'm going to go to is the card sort feature here. And now with the card sort feature, I'm going to add three images and I'm going to add three text buttons like so. So as I go back to my activity, I'm going to take a screenshot of my three diagrams, make them a little bit bigger. And I'm going to use these three images to create this activity in Desmos. So from here, if I want to add an image, I just click it and it'll take me to my desktop 
and my images are saved to my desktop. When you take screenshots, you would just pull up to wherever it's saved on your computer. So I have my first image there, pressing open and it's uploading. I'm gonna do the same thing for my second image and the same thing for my third image. So now I'm gonna input my text so I'm going to copy and paste my first equation, copy and paste my second equation. And you'll notice that one half became 12 there, right? Um, I'm going to click my math icon there. And if I do one divided by two, that is what we want. And for my last equation, I'll double check here our intercepted arc was equal to 50 so we're going to update that to 50. so from this portion i would suggest adding an answer key so if you click answer key here um, these are not the right answers yet you just connect the right answers and as students attempt this activity in your class you'll see who's doing it correct and who's doing it not correct generally desmos will highlight green um, for two pairs that were um, correctly um, linked together and it'll be the color orange for incorrect and you'll get a chance to see which students did what so I'm gonna click done here so this is my card sort activity right and then if I wanted to I could put my directions right on there only bad part about the card sort activity I can't include that diagram with the sentence stems here that might be something I want to say out loud or put in an additional slide so again here's my preview with my directions so for the second piece, I'm going to click notes. And with my note, I'm going to enter my question in. Right? And then you can click text input or f of x input. I'm going to click text input because this is just a question. Um, and if I preview, here is how the question comes up. And again, you'll be able to see this in real time, students' responses, and you might be using that as a gathering tool. And again, getting an idea of students' metacognitive process and um, really helping them out with misconceptions that are revealed through their writing. So from here, I'm going to show one more variation. Um, so the card sort feature was great uh, for our first sample. For our second sample, I'm going to add our instructions here on the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of our diagrams and equations for this question. And I am gonna click media, and I'm just gonna drag and drop that in there. All right, so from here, why did I do something like this? Um, I'm gonna click table and describe why. So I am going to go to figure versus equation and I'm gonna type in diagram one and do the same thing for the other two type in diagram two and diagram three respectively so from here when I have this format uh, when I'm asking students to create a representation for diagram three it would be very easy I'm gonna click the preview screen and uh, for me, this is actually not visually pleasing here. I don't like how small this text is. So I'll show you guys one more thing. If I, if I look at these three bars right up here, I'm just gonna drag and drop it underneath. Um, now I'm actually gonna put this underneath the image. And now if I click preview, that's a little bit more visually pleasing. If I were a student, I might be able to see that a little bit easier. So again, in this, equal, in this uh, version of it, I'm gonna take a look at diagram three, and if I'm a student, the card sort feature doesn't really let me create an equation for the missing representation. So here, if I go to diagram three, I formatted my table as an equation. So I could write something like one half of 80, or the intercepted arc, careful with my notation there, is gonna equal the inscribed angle, or 11x plus seven. And that's a way for you to allow students to create the proper um, equation. Again, for equation, or I'm sorry, for diagram one, maybe they could write uh, equation one if they wanted to, right? Um, but 
they could also write 150 equals the inscribed, the intercepted arc, excuse me, or 150 degrees equals the intercepted arc. I made an integral there somehow. So these are two variations for how you may use Desmos. So the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click publish. And now that I've published this, I'm going to use this link right here. And I am adding this link. Signed out. Sign so I'm back in. Um, I am adding this link right here on the bottom of this page as soon as I'm able to. I'm sorry, I've been logged out, but I'm sure this will be pretty fast. Okay, so now that I have access back to my document, I am going to add the link on the bottom. Let's call this uh, Desmos sample. We will insert that link right there. And when you click the link, let's do a sample here. Uh, let's say that you like this, but you'd like to modify it a little bit. Just click those three tabs on the top right, click copy and edit. And you have this activity bar set for you to do whatever you'd like to it and modify it to your preference and add to the lesson if you'd like so. Um, I hope this was helpful.